And so we have demonstrated the existence of the integers Q and R that, uh, in the uh, theorem. So now we need to demonstrate that they are uh, unique. So uh, suppose that there exists integers Q, Q prime, R, and R prime such that for every uh, pair of non-zero integers we have that the number a can be represented represented as the uh, product of a uh, b times q plus r where r is plus or minus uh, greater than or equal to zero but strictly less than the absolute value of B and A can also be represented as B times Q prime plus R prime where R prime is greater than or equal to zero but strictly less than R prime is strictly less than uh, the absolute value B and so we have two representations of the uh, integer A and so we have that b times q plus r is equal to b times q prime plus r prime. And so uh, we'll uh, group like terms. And so we have b times q minus q prime is equal to r prime minus r. So notice that b is a multiple, an integer multiple of r prime minus r. And so B must divide this uh, difference, R minus R prime. And if B divides this uh, integer, then the, the absolute value of B divides this integer. So we need to show that R prime is equal to R and hence R prime minus R is equal to zero. Suppose to the contrary. that r prime minus r is not equal to zero. Then, without loss of generality, without loss of generality, we may assume that r prime minus r is greater than zero. So we have r prime minus r is greater than zero r prime minus r is certainly less than r prime both are positive uh, integers and r prime is strictly less than the absolute value of b now as the absolute value of b divides r prime minus r we have that the absolute value of b is less than or equal to r prime minus r And so we have in one statement, the absolute value of B is less than or equal to the difference of R prime and R, which is strictly less than the absolute value of B. So these two conditions are mutually exclusive. And so by contradiction, R prime minus R is equal to zero and so r prime is equal to r and because this is true we have that b times q is equal to b times q prime and as b is not zero we have that q is equal to q prime all right and so we have demonstrated that for every two non-zero integers
There exists unique integers Q and R such that A is the product of B times Q plus the remainder R where R is non-negative and strictly less than the absolute value of B. Okay, so we'll end lecture two with some more facts about division. So let A, B, C, and D be integers. Then A divides zero, one divides A, and A divides itself, two. A divides 1 if and only if A is either 1 or negative 1, so A is plus or minus 1. 3. A divides B and B divides A if and only if A is plus or minus B. 4. If A divides B and C divides D, then the product AC divides the product BD. 5. If A divides B and B is not 0, then the absolute value of A is less than or equal to the absolute value of B. All right, so the first statement is very easy to prove. In fact, we've already looked at two of them. So, uh, a divides 0 for any integer a, since 0 is expressible as a multiple of a, an integer multiple of a. 1 divides a, since a is expressible as a multiple of 1, an integer multiple of 1. And a divides itself, since it is expressible as a, an integer multiple of itself. Okay, second statement. Suppose that a divides 1, then since the only integer divisors of the number 1 are the number 1 itself and negative 1, we have that a must be one of these numbers. So a is plus or minus 1. Conversely, suppose that A is either 1 or negative 1, then since 1 divides itself and negative 1 divides the number 1, we have that A divides the number 1. All right, third statement. Suppose that A divides B and B divides A. Then, from this first statement, we have that B is a multiple of A, an integer multiple of A. And from the second statement, we have that A is an integer multiple of B. And so this is true for some integers E and F. So we have that A is equal to B times F, but B is A times E, so A is equal to AE times F, and this is the same as A times EF. And so we have the statement that A is equal to a multiple of itself, that multiple must be 1. And so e times f must be 1. There are only two integers uh, that we can take and multiply by itself and uh, get 1, and that is 1 and negative 1, and so we have e is either e is equal to f is equal to 1, or e is equal to f, which is equal to negative 1. 
And so again, A is B times F. So this is B times either 1 or negative 1. So this is plus or minus 1. And so this is plus or minus B. Conversely, suppose that A is equal to plus or minus B. Then A is equal to B times plus or minus 1. In either case, uh, A is an integer multiple of B. So B divides A. Similarly, B is equal to plus or minus A, which is A times plus or minus 1. Again, in either case, uh, B is an integer multiple of A. So A divides B. All right, fourth statement. Suppose that A divides B and C divides D, then B is an, an integer multiple of A and D is an integer multiple of C. And so the product B times D is equal to AE times CF, which is the same as AC times EF. So BD is an integer multiple of AC. And hence AC divides BD. All right? Last statement. Suppose that A divides B and B is not 0. Then B is an integer multiple of A. Now, in particular, B is not the number 0. And as we are dividing A into B, A is not zero. And so the number, the uh, integer E is also not zero. And so E is some integer that is not zero. And so we have that this integer E divides B as it is a, an integer multiple of B. And so B divided by E is an integer that is different from 0. So we have that B divided by E is the integer A. So if we take the absolute value, we have that the absolute value of B divided by the absolute value of E is equal to the absolute value of A. Now clearly, the absolute value of B divided by the absolute value of E is less than or equal to the absolute value of B, but this expression is the absolute value of A, and so we have the absolute value of A is less than or equal to the absolute value of B. All right, so next time we will look at lattices, uh, equivalence relations, and uh, the integers modulo some given integer n. I hope you have enjoyed the second lecture. Thanks for watching.